I invite you to please stand this morning. And as you do so, breathe, breathe in deeply. We breathe in the presence of a God who loves us, a God who is extraordinary, who looks to heal us and connect us and love us. And so we come to this God this morning asking for continual transformation in our life so we can be Christ-like in this world. We come together in the name of our creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ has risen indeed. Alleluia. Turn us again, O God of our salvation, that the light of your face may shine on us. May your justice shine like the sun. And may the poor be lifted. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal Mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess in their faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first lesson this morning is from Acts chapter 4, verses 32 through 35. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what, they were, what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. Hear what the Spirit is saying. This morning we read Psalm 123. O oh God, how good and pleasant it is when brethren live together in unity. It is like fine oil upon the head that runs down upon the beard, upon the beard of Aaron, and runs down upon the collar of his robe. It is like the dew of Hermon that falls upon the hills of Zion, for there the Lord has ordered, ordained the blessing, life for everyone. The first lesson is from 1 John chapter 1, verses 1 through 2. I, yeah, I don't know. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, 
and we have seen it and testify to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you may also have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sin, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And not for our sins only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Hear what the Spirit is saying. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said that, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told them, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hand and put my fingers in the mark of his, of his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hand. Reach your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, you have believed because you have seen me. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these were written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our collective hearts be acceptable to you, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. One of the things that um, Mary Ellen and I over the last several weeks have been um, very attuned to is the NCAA basketball tournament. <laughs> and... Um, some of you may know that Arizona um, women's basketball team 
um, went all the way to the championship game and lost by one point. And my beloved played for the University of Arizona's basketball team. Um, she will tell you, she will be very quick. <laughs> Look how embarrassed she is. She would tell you, and she'd be very quick to tell you that she sat on the bench most of the time and she looked fabulous. <laughs> um, so this is why it was so much fun to watch Arizona. Um, as their coach, Adia Barnes, has said in no numerous occasions throughout the tournament, right? We aren't the best team. We don't have the most talent. Um, and then she'd go through all these lists of things that they didn't have. And it was like, oh gosh, enough already with what you don't have. But then she said this, but these girls, these young women would run through a wall for me. These young women would run through a wall for me. Doesn't that kind of, isn't that inspiring when you think about that? of how people just are human, we have a human capacity to be able to overcome amazing odds, right? And to do incredible things. These young women would run through a wall for me. The door was shut in the upper room. Jesus had already made an appearance, right? And everybody who was anybody in Jesus's inner circle, those disciples were there, except Thomas, poor Thomas. He had an appointment to get his vaccine. He wasn't there. <laughs> he couldn't figure out how to get there that particular day. And so a week goes by after he's hearing these stories from his, from his friends, right? His buddies that Jesus had been there. He's hearing all these stories and he's like, I don't think so. That's crazy. That's crazy that that would happen. And so now the stage is set. They are behind that locked door. All of them at this point. At least we know Thomas is there. And Jesus comes. And he runs through a wall. For Thomas. Think about that. Being on the other side of this locked door and all of a sudden we oftentimes think of Jesus in this particular scene as just appearing. You know, just what if it was a little bit more complicated than that? What if Jesus actually had to make an effort to get into that room and he didn't stop until he was there? Now, Thomas walked away from that experience. He believed. And blessed are those who have the experience, right, of belief and don't see Jesus in the flesh. That's what we are told. So what I want to invite you to consider today is that you are Thomas. Not the doubting Thomas that we hear or think of every time we hear this story. Not the inept, can't do anything right Thomas. But that you are Thomas standing in this room. Whatever that means in your life, when you feel like the walls are up and nobody can get in and nobody has tried, and nobody loves you, and you are certain that you do not want to get out of that room because at least you're safe in this space. Our Savior, Jesus Christ, would and does run through a wall for you. This story is not about community necessarily, right? I love to talk about community, but this story is about this intimate moment between Thomas and Jesus. This moment that changes everything for Thomas. His life will never be the same. And think about that. He has been walking with Jesus for several years at this point. 
right? And yet it takes this experience, this one more, one more experience with Jesus going the extra mile. And does God do that for Thomas? Absolutely. We have an opportunity today to open our hearts and our minds up even further. For the next seven Sundays, right? Um, the season of Easter is actually uh, seven Sundays. And we have in this second Sunday an opportunity to consider moving from that closed room that is so much like Lent, right? That kind of dark place where we do a lot of self-reflection and get right with God. Jesus, through the resurrection, tells us that dark space is not for us anymore. God's desire for us is bigger, right, than that space, better for our lives. And that seed of who God has created us to be is already planted within us. Kids ask me all the time, teenagers, you know, I don't know what I'm gonna, they're completely stressed out. I don't know what I'm gonna do when I grow up. What am I gonna do when I grow up? I said, I, I still don't know what I'm gonna do when I grow up. <laughs> Please do not nail that down now, right? It's too much pressure for one, but the other thing is God's unfolding grace comes into our life and that's a place of light and promise and hope. And then we want to share that because it's too good to be true. There was this um, experience that I had yesterday that was so cool and I'm just gonna share it with you in closing. We've been delivering food, right? That's not a surprise to any of you. And um, one of the things that's happened over the past um, month, two months is um, asking on occasion if people have special prayers that they would like us to pray for. And so you'll notice in the prayers of the people that we have special prayers for folks and you may not recognize their names. And that's because we're praying for people that we're delivering food to. That's cool, right? Yesterday, yesterday, I was here at the, at the office. I was getting the emergency food list ready. I was writing the prayers of the people and I saw one person caught my attention. It was this woman, Linda. And Linda um, gave thanks for the $1,400 check that she received from the government, also known as God. <laughs> <laughs> the $1,400 check, and she gave thanks because she could pay off her property taxes and she could keep her home. She could keep her home. This was not going to a, for a new cell phone. This was not going for a big screen television. She was able to keep her home. And I was like, wow, this is, in, this is incredible. How cool that you know she shared that with Michelle how great that we're gonna pray for her and give thanks for her today. And then I made the list and I took it downstairs and I waited for delivery drivers to show up, right? And the coolest thing happened yesterday. Delivery drivers didn't show up. And it actually, you know, at first I was like, where are the delivery drivers? And then I realized how God at least has worked in my life, no joke how God has worked in my life. And we had two other folks that were here and they decided they were gonna do some deliveries, which they had never done before. So that was awesome. And I said, you know what? I'm gonna take 14621. Um, and it's an incredibly impoverished area beyond 09 where we are. I said, I'm gonna take this. Didn't give thought to anything that I had read before. I hopped in my Jeep, off I went with the deliveries. And all I could think about is, oh, I've got to do this in under an hour because I really, really want to get home. I didn't have anything else going at home, maybe fertilizing the backyard, but nothing really pressing. So I get and I'm out there and I'm delivering things. And within the first or second delivery, I realized 
I'm delivering food to people. And all they wanted to do was connect. And so I started conversations with them. Lo and behold, that's a good thing for a priest or somebody to do. <laughs> I got to Linda's house. And I, um, she came out and she was all excited to see me and recognize, you know, remembered the conversation that she had had with Michelle on the phone, really appreciated the connection. She told me that her husband who had passed two years ago was a pastor. Um, it was a really amazing conversation. I got to see the house that she had paid down the property taxes for. And I realized in that moment, because I had been reflecting on this text, I realized in that moment that people need someone in their life or a couple people in their life that they know will run through a wall for them. They need it. They have to have it. It's like oxygen. Who are you that person for? Who connects and buoys you up in your life to be able to be that person so you can live your absolute best life. We're not doing mission work because it's an obligation. We're doing mission work because it connects us to each other, builds relationships with each other. And sometimes we go above and beyond because people need to know that we will run through a wall for them because Jesus has done it for us. Amen. We affirm our faith as we say together, we believe in God, creator and sustainer of earth, sea and sky. We believe in Jesus Christ, born of the womb of Mary. He was the first to live fully into the destiny for which we were all created, healing the broken and serving the poor, liberating the burdened and reconciling heaven and earth, redeeming even death. He rose from the grave and with wounded hands, he embraces us. He ascended into heaven to be everywhere present and there is now nothing beyond the reach of his healing touch. We believe in the Holy Spirit that stirs our hearts, animates our lives, breathes new life. Good Shepherd, within your embrace, we are safe and secure. Within your embrace, we know that we are precious in your sight. Within your embrace, we feel the warmth of family and belonging. Within your embrace, we grow and are nurtured together as one flock, the people of your pasture, under your loving care and protection. Come, let us bow down. Good Shepherd, within your embrace, we find comfort and healing. We bring to you those who are weak or struggling with physical, mental, or spiritual health. We pray for the healing of Renee's vascular problems. Gobar's recovery from a stroke, Jasmine and her mother who have COVID. Jasmine is pregnant and her mom has kidney disease. Janelle who has COVID. We give thanks for Linda's ability to pay her property tax with the government check so she can keep her home and give thanks for the vaccine. We ask that Shireen know in her heart that she is loved by us and God. At this time, we share the names of those who are in need of our prayers on this day aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Come, let us bow down. Good Shepherd, within your embrace, we find justice. We bring to you the brave voices who cry out for freedom, those prepared to stand up, be heard without counting the cost. We pray for those who have been imprisoned or tortured for their race, color, caste, or faith. 
for all Christians who have taken up the cross and know its weight and pain. Come, let us bow down. Before the Lord, our Maker. Good Shepherd, within your embrace we find peace. We bring to you those orphaned, crippled, or dispossessed by war, for refugees wandering this earth in search of a home, for all victims of strife and warfare, and for all those who have dedicated their lives for the search for peace and reconciliation. Come, let us bow down. Gracious God, make us always thankful for your loving providence and grant that we, remembering the account that we must one day give, may be faithful stewards of your good gifts through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to now be seated as we listen to our special music this morning. Um, it's an opportunity for us to lift up uh, prayer concerns uh, to God, just between us and God, also to, uh, to give thanks for the many blessings in our lives.
The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right to give you our thanks and praise, O God, for you have raised Jesus Christ from the dead and swallowed up death forever. You made the world and all that is in it. You made the day and we will and we will be glad and rejoice in it. For this is the day your prophets testified about when you destroy the shroud of death and open the gates of salvation to all who believe. You sent your son Jesus among us, anointed with your Holy Spirit and power to preach peace and heal all who were oppressed. Therefore, with the whole realm of nature around us, with earth, sea, and sky, with angels and archangels who envelop us, with all the saints before us and beside us, with sisters and brothers east and west, north and south, and with the loved ones separated from us now who yet in this mystery are close to us. We join in the chorus of praise that rings throughout eternity as we say together, Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, O God, who breaks open deep the tomb of our pain, calls life out of death, and leads all creation into life eternal. Blessed is your son, Jesus, who in life and death revealed your glory breaking forth from the grave stronghold and by doing so awakens in us the hope that the whole earth will be saved from its enemies. On the night when he was betrayed, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. So as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the mystery of Christ. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. 
Therefore, here in this place, we celebrate the life that was born in Bethlehem, the life that Jesus has shared among his community through the centuries and shares with us now. Come now, O Spirit of Christ, brood over these bodily things, this bread and this wine. May they be for us your, your body, body and blood, vibrant with, with life, life, healing, renewing, renewing and making us whole. Anoint us with your life-giving power that we might recognize your presence in each and every person. By Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, Father in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed, hallowed be, be your name. name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we share in this one bread. The feast of life has been prepared for you. Partake and be filled with the goodness of God. At this time, I'd like to invite all who are seeking God's unconditional love in your life to know that you are most welcome to receive this holy meal. This is not my table and this is not the church's table. This is God's table and every single one of you is welcome to come to God's table. We pray together. Life-giving God in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your son's resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, Amen. God has given us living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The wisdom, love, and grace of God strengthen each one of you to be God's hands and heart in this world of ours and the blessing of God Almighty, our creator, redeemer, and sustainer, be with you on this Sunday morning and remain with you always. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Go and tell how God has touched your life. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.